Cliff Bray here with another episode of Hummel Hospital. Today I'm going to be repairing these two figurines. They share a, a common uh, damaged area. And it's the area underneath the rim of the hats. You can see that white chip that has occurred when the Hummel was evidently, you know, knocked up against something or fell over. It's a fairly common uh, damaged area. And I'm gonna show you today how to repair that and repaint it. For this one here, the chip is a little bit smaller, but it's still almost in the exact same place on the rim of the hat. Other than that, these two figurines are in very good condition. I bought both of them uh, online on eBay, and they are they really are in very good condition. But that chip right up front there on the hat is, is very visible. Not quite as visible on this particular figurine here, unless you kind of kind of get it just right there. You can see it now. But uh, But we'll repair that one there as well. I'm going to be using a uh, powder-based putty to do that and just mix it with a little bit of water and uh, it's, it's fairly fast setting and so I'll mix that up and be right back. This is the water-based putty that I will be using. It just comes in a powder form. I've mixed up a small amount of it here and have it at the right consistency to where it should stick fairly well underneath the rim of the hat there. So uh, you can use these uh, utensils here to uh, place that putty, but really you can just use a regular kitchen knife as well if you want. So I will uh, go ahead and try to mold the uh, putty as best I can underneath the hat to have it match the uh, edge of the rim of the hat, and then I'll be, be back. I have completed repairing the two chipped areas on the hats, and everything came out very well. I was able to conform the putty to the curvature of the rim of the hat very well. That was a little bit easier to do with this hat here because it's more of a a uniform curvature all the way around. That was a powder-based uh, putty, as I said before. So I took some white enamel paint and covered the putty surface, and that will kind of seal that uh, putty in place. It just makes it a little bit stronger surface as people are handling it versus the uh, surface of the putty itself. What I'm going to do now is uh, paint over those repaired areas with two tones of green paint. This hat it kind of has like a swirl design on it and I will try to duplicate that as best I can. I will put the light color green on first and then use a kind of a stiff bristle brush with the dark green after the light green has dried to put on those little strokes of dark green paint. Not quite as pronounced on uh, the other hat here, but still is a kind of a similar two-tone of green paint. So I'm gonna get the paints ready and do that painting and be right back to show you the results. I have finished painting the repaired rims of the two hats, and I think they came out very nice. You can kind of take a look at the amount of work it takes to match those different shades of green and the streaking in the paint as well. But if you just keep working at it, you will get the right shades. I used three different types of acrylic paint to do that painting. 
uh, green, of course, and then the white, both to kind of lighten up that green a little bit uh, for this particular hat, but also to add in the white streaking that you see on there as well. And then I used the black there to darken the green for this hat. And I hadn't really noticed it before, but there were actually kind of some dark streaks in the paint pattern for this hat to begin with. So I tried to match those as well by using the, the black paint there as the kind of a streaking. So uh, good job overall. Uh, I did use this uh, gloss varnish to paint both hats after I had done the painting itself with the green paint because I found that uh, putting that glossy coat on there kind of helps hide any defects that might be left over from your repairs because you can never repair it perfectly. But by putting the gloss finish on there, just the way the light hits that gloss varnish, it kind of breaks up uh, uh, any defects that might, might exist. When I went to paint the rims of the hat after uh, repairing them with this uh, powder-based uh, uh, putty here, I found that even though I had covered the repairs with that white epoxy, the moisture from the thinned down acrylic paints was able to get underneath that enamel and it, it just kind of softened up the water-based powdered putty there and made it to where it just kind of started flaking away. So I decided just to kind of remove the powdered putty and start over using this epoxy putty. And it comes in uh, two parts and you take a little bit uh, uh, from each of the two uh, slabs of putty that are in there and you mix them together and roll it together real good. And then it hardens extremely uh, well, very water resistant. So uh, in this particular case, I recommend using this epoxy putty over the uh, powder putty, mainly just because of, of how thin the rim was on this one particular hat is where that was really needed in order to uh, allow it to dry. You can see how kind of a sharp rim is on that hat there that uh, the epoxy putty just held together much, much better. So, uh, job is complete. If you did not know exactly where those repairs were done on those two hats, I, I think you'd have a hard time finding them just at a quick glance. So these two Hummels are, are ready for display. This particular one uh, has a, what's called a full B mark on the bottom. And that indicates a uh, 19, early 1950s uh, mark. And here it says Germany. And what that indicates is that this, uh, this Hummel was, was made before there was an East and West Germany. It's not like some of the real newer Hummels that have Germany on the bottom of it because Germany has been reunited. And then for many years, as we know, uh, a lot of Hummels said West Germany on the bottom, like this one right here does. But this one here just says Germany, but it was the, the Germany of long ago. That particular figurine there is probably uh, over um, 60 years old. So the fact that it had that chipped hat right up front there might be a reason for some people to uh, maybe just discard it and not want to display it anymore. So repairing it, uh, uh, because these are works of art, but when they're very old, 
works of art. Uh, this one here is, uh, again, like I said, over 60 years old. It just, it really is good to restore them and put them back where uh, people can appreciate them and uh, enjoy uh, their beauty. And just because there's a little chip or a scratch or a break or something, uh, it's no reason to throw these in the trash by any means because they can be repaired. It just takes a little bit of uh, patience and effort and, uh, and experimentation, uh, but they can be repaired. So hopefully you learned a little bit about uh, repairing uh, chipped Hummel hats <laughs> during this video, and I'll see you on the next episode of Hummel Hospital.